Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $5,000 Modern Open. I'm Tandy, joined by Ross Merriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We got two players left in the field. Why don't you tell us who's playing in the finals and what they're playing? Well, we did see Gabriel Abadi before the break win his semifinal match, so he is battling in the finals, and he will be battling in a mirror match against Brandon Carpenter, two Yawgmoth players. This deck has been the story of the tournament all day, yep. from the opening metagame breakdown, where Yawgmoth was the second most played deck, and that was very surprising. Then, you know, started crushing the tournament. There was five in the top 14 at one point. There's three in our top eight. Now there's two in the finals. Yep. Yawgmoth making a huge statement here, saying, you know what? I am one of the elite decks in the modern metagame, and I'm tired of people thinking otherwise just because I have four young wolves. Yeah, I mean, look, if you really take a look at the construction of these Yawgmoth decks, I think previous iterations were essentially all in on like Ignoble Hierarch and Birds of Paradise early on to help you ramp into those creatures more quickly. And what that did is it created this pressure point for the deck where cards like Fury, Spy Removal, like Lightning Bolt, and Unholy Heat were able to slow you down enough where you just kind of stumbled and died. And at this point, though, in order to insulate themselves from those powerful removal spells and cards like Fury, they've adopted things like Arboreal Grazer and really just like shrunk the total number of those mana creatures and effectively erased their entire, uh, you know, point of attack that the other decks were uh, implementing on them. Yeah, but in this matchup, I kind of would rather be on the mana creature side of things, which is what Brandon Carpenter's playing. He does have two copies of Delighted Halfling, uh, so that's much makes you much better against Renan six uh but still has five one toughness mana creatures mm -hmm. in his deck four of nobles and one birds of paradise so uh he's going a little bit more of a traditional route a body going with that grazer plan that we saw work so effectively for him all day really but i think in this mirror specifically i'd rather be on the mana creature side Same. and more importantly i'd rather be on the play and that's where brandon carpenter finds himself he was the lone five one in this tournament that was unable to draw as a result of winning that match, he jumps everybody in the standings, takes the first seed. He's been on the play all through the top eight. It's gone well so far. I kind of like him here too. All right, well, uh, let's talk about a little bit what these players are playing for. So Ross, we have a nice little thing that you can show off from our friends at Ultimate Guard. This is what's going to the winner, the archive deck box. You can hold up to 900 sleeved double sleeved cards in it uh it's great for holding some balance on your head multiple well. decks cubes it's, it's awesome it's one of their best selling products uh and the winner gets one uh the winner also gets this sick play mat this uh expressive iteration this is our season three aiq champion play mat and the winner is going to get that and the archive deck box as well as fifteen hundred dollars cash second place Nice. <laughs> now, both of these players have qualified for the Apex Invitational True. in November, but only one of them will punch their ticket to the regional championship at DreamHack Atlanta yep. later this year as well. This is a one-slot RCQ, so that's what these players are playing for. A big chunk of cash and that slot in the regional championship. We'll see if a body can pull off these, I would say, just very slight upset being on the draw here. So super close match should be very interesting. This is a matchup where both players really need to know their deck in and out, and we've seen both of them pilot this Yawgmoth deck very proficiently throughout the tournament. So should be a very interesting one and a very technical match. All right, well, let's head on down to the feature match area. Our players are ready for this uh, Golgari Yogmoth mirror match. On your left is Gabriel Body, and uh, he's going to be on the draw here. Yeah. Players have their hands. Let's get them started. On your right, Brandon Carpenter going to be on the play, but no mana creature. You got to love that for your body. Yep. Fetch. Yeah, body is fetching, so there is a mana creature now. Does have has four grazers, also two ignobles. So still has a couple one toughness mana creatures in the deck. Likely has one of those. Could have a young wolf. But I would say, given how fast a body is playing here, that he has the better of them, but this is the speed he plays at all the time. Right. So that's not a tell. A body fetch shock goes to 17. Gonna lead off here with a mana creature of some kind. I see grazer and I see colony garden. Nice. This is what we call the nuts. Yeah. The, uh, the Colony Gardens are a really nice addition to the Yawgmoth decks, I think, giving you lands that produce bodies to help uh, make things like Court of Calling a little bit cheaper. Yeah. And they just are great fodder for all your sacrifice stuff. But Gabriel is already a body, so does he mm. need lands that produce bodies? That's right. So, <laughs> going back to bodies, we have Wall of Roots from Brandon Carpenter. Let's see if a body can match or continue his explosive streak. 
I see Swamp, Colony Garden, Arboreal Grazer, Strangerroot Geist, hmm. which is very awkward because he cannot cast both of his green cards. Yeah, my guess is Strangerroot Geist and Colony Garden is going to be the play. Yeah, and then, and then a Quarter Calling. So he's setting up for for the uh, Yawgmoth next turn. Yeah, so I'd rather play the Tap Land. And then we'll have four creatures and four lands next turn. That's a cord for five. So you could even then uh, play Arboreal Grazer. And then cord. And then cord. Mm -hmm. Okay, another plant token. Which would be ideal if he draws the third colony card, and there are three in the deck. So yeah, I think we... I... It's got to be Stranger Geist. Yeah. Come you, on now. You, you don't have another land in hand, so... Okay, Ooh, okay. Well, whatever. I was wrong. Next turn can still only play one Stranger Geist, but can play Stranger Geist and Cord, I believe. Yeah, but now if he does that, he's tapped out. If he had played Geist this turn instead of next turn, he'd have that. Effectively, the one mana that's untapped here would have gotten utilized. And well, now he has to spend it next turn. I, I I agree with what you're saying, but I think a peeled green source allows him to go Stranger Root, Stranger Root, and then go crazy. Maybe that's why he did it the way he did it. Now, would the, that would allow him to clear Carpenter's Battlefield and then attack with both Geists on the uh, on the Gris. Oh, we found Young Wolf. So now we can go Young Wolf, Strangeroot Geist, Cord for Yogmoth, and that's going to allow us to wipe the opposing side of the board and draw a ton of cards, however many we want, up to seven, uh, 17. 17 equals death, so as many as you want up until that point. Now, I don't want to do that many. The Undying Creatures will untap during the course of this loop, and we have a land drop to make. So a body can fire off a cord for one should he draw it, but I don't think that is good enough for a kill. You need to find the Blood Artist. All right, so Creature down, Stranger guys probably going to just but, attack the Grist here, and if yeah. the Wall of Roots wants to block, it takes a lot less fodder to chop it down. But it looks like we're just going to go ahead and kill it, so... Another minus counter. There's they have to track the minus one minus one counters as well as the minus o oh, minus one counters. Different eras of magic cards, eh? I don't think I uh, see. So yeah, it hasn't played a land yet, so can go lands and cord for two. No, it's, mark? it would just be a cord for one. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's sack this Blox Diamond. Let's get this Wall Roots out of here. Let's put the Grist down to one so it can't kill the Yawgmoth and leave Carpenter yeah. with just two lands and essentially no fodder. So even if Carpenter had third land, Grist, if he Grists into all three Grists in a row and gets four insects, then we could be in business for something. Then we okay. Could, then I'm we in. could cord for our own. Okay. All right, there's Yawgmoth. outs. There's outs. Okay. And then use our four... Oh, no, but Yawgmoth can't kill other Yawgmoths because it, it's a human and it's pro-humans. Ah, uh, all right. So, Wall Roots down, a body with a grip full, can still go land plus one drop if he has it, has Nurturing Peatland. And this is going to be a Young Wolf. And now, Stranger Guy is going to attack the Gris for three. Back Brandon Carpenter's way. Can he pull out a miracle? This looks dire. Blood Artist to draw. I don't think that's going to do it. Take up the Gris if we hit three Gris in a row. It's the only way. The head scratcher, grip full, accident. <laughs> Brandon Carpenter down a game of body, breaking serve on the draw there, taking it yep. down with an explosive start. Blocks Diamond showing off. And now you got to feel like he's a, a pretty big favorite. He only needs to win one more game, gets one at least on the play, should he lose game two. So, uh, yeah, that, that when you play this Mana Creature Mirror, having a Mana Creature on turn one is really important. Yeah, one I player agree. did. One player did. Well, it was not only that. Uh, you know, it it was the combination of missing land drops, not having the one drop accelerator, only getting a wall of roots as your only creature in play by turn number three, yeah. whereas a body just spit everything onto the table in three turns or whatever. But it, if Carpenter has a ignoble hierarch on turn one, he's able to play a grist on turn two, and that game is very different. Yes, agreed. <laughs> agreed. Yeah, checking out sideboards. Brandon Carpenter, we have a Crime Punishment, two Endurance, one Engineered Explosives, three Force of Vigor, one Go for the Throat, one Haywire Might, one Necromancia, one Scavenging Ooze, one Shieldred, two Thoughtseize, and one Veil of Summer. I like the Go for the Throat. I like the Necromancia, just take their Yawgmoths. I like the Scavenging Ooze, and I like the Shieldred. Anything else you think I missed? 
Um, so what what are your thoughts? So like crime punishment obviously it hits both players, right? But like yeah. what if you're so far behind it's like the only thing you, you can but you're the one with actual mana creatures and he's the one with grazers. Okay. So a body's crime punishment is Ah, I see. Cool. Okay. Uh so, and he does have one as well. He's got one crime punishment, three thought seize, two force of vigor, one Phyrexian Metamorph, three endurance, one haywire might, one ratchet bomb, and a shieldred. So I like the shieldred. Um Maybe you like Ratchet Bomb or Crime Punishment as a way to stop your opponent's mana creatures. Uh, that seems reasonable, but otherwise, I think Carpenter's got a slight edge in the cyber. Go for the Throat is a clean answer to a Yawgmoth or a Wall of Roots. Scavenging Ooze breaks up the opposing and dying creatures. The Necromancer could just break open a game by taking exiling all the Yawgmoths from a body's deck. So he's got some haymakers that can really swing a game. A body, you know, he has a way to contain the the opposing mana. But all that's going to do is extend the game, and then you have time to just make land drops and you know do you know play your spells on a curve. All right, Ross. So we have two Yawgmoth players here in the finals. Do you want to give us kind of like a breakdown of how the tournament went and why you think maybe both of these Yawgmoth decks made it to the finals, uh, considering it put up great results today? Yeah, I think the big thing I look at when I look at the metagame breakdown I did earlier is that Creativity and Omnath are were both pretty big decks. And I like the Ogmoth in those mid-range matchups. Mm -hmm. I like Ogmoth against Hammer. Um, and so th there's a lot of just popular decks that your deck is quite good against. I think the uh, Grazer versions and you know versions with Delighted Halfling to limit your vulnerability to Renin Six, you know, have leveled the deck up to an extent. So it's better than people are giving it credit for. And it's also one of those decks that. It does a lot of things when you know the ins and outs really well. Uh, it does a lot of things that your opponent is not expecting. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw a body have endurance in response to an indomitable creativity with the evoke trigger on the stack, sack into my Yawgmoth to kill your dwarf. Yeah, that was sick. Which his opponent was not expecting at all. I mean, I wasn't expecting it, and I had complete information. It was a yeah. blowout. It was great. So it's no surprise that. You know, Yawgmoth did, did well, and it's certainly no surprise that it's these two players in the finals with Yawgmoth because yeah. they've been, you know, very impressive piloting this very complicated deck all day. All right, as the players are shuffling up here for game number two, a reminder, a body going to be on the draw, but up a game. Uh, his opponent, you know, you have to imagine losing when you're on the play in a matchup like this where it's all about mana acceleration has not not feel so great because even if you win game two, you're going to be on the draw in game three and a body can just run you over before anything even happens. Yeah, but you also got to think if he broke serve, I can break serve. True, true. So, you know, just take care of the game on the play. Maybe mulligan a little bit more aggressively. Mm -hmm. This is not a deck that mulligans that well because it's a very much so a critical mass deck. Right. I think cards like Quarter Calling require a lot of creatures in the battlefield. So I can understand the impulse to keep hands like that, but this is a matchup where I think you do have to mulligan aggressively because you need to come out of the gate swinging. All right, so Carpenter taking a look in at the opener, a body. Oof, that's a dry so... armor in the opening hand. Might okay. be the worst card in the deck to have in the opener. I mean, generally is. It's a land that doesn't tap for mana. <laughs> yeah. You know? He gets yeah. punked a bunch by spot removal, whatever. It does take the mulligan. So, yeah. A body got a mulligan to five from his opponent in the semis, getting a mulligan up again here in the finals. Okay. I'm starting to sound like a conspiracy theorist or whatever. <laughs> this is the nature of magic tournaments. You, you need to get lucky in a couple spots. That's true. You also just need to be great. Yeah, Avadi has played very, very well. Yeah, both players putting on a show today. And now we get to watch this awesome finals between the Golgari Yawgmoth decks who dominated this event. Dominated. And that's the Dried Arbor again. So. Sees it, needs a swig before he continues yeah. drawing. Knows it's going on the bottom. Yeah. Don't worry. I've, I've looked at a number of disasterful Dried Arbors in my day. <laughs> and I didn't have the option of London Mulligan them to the bottom of my deck. All right, putting it on the bottom. And underweight, the body keeps seven. Do we see any acceleration for Carpenter? I see a Young Wolf, I see a Yawgmoth. All right, okay. there it is, the Delighted Halfling, the new card from the Lord of the Rings. So let's get that one on the screen because we've actually seen it a couple times today considering we've seen so much Yawgmoth. The body answers with Ignoble Hierarch, slightly better if you ask me, but Delighted Halfling, could accelerate Carpenter ahead here, even though uh, it only taps for colored mana if you play something legendary. It still taps for colorless regardless. 
You have to turn two grists. And does Carpenter want to just trade mana creatures? I don't think so. I think when you're ahead, you just push your advantage yeah. and maybe save it for something else. Ooh, milled the Necromancer and a body <laughs> pumping the fists on the other side of the table. Yeah, especially with the Yawgmoth in hand, if you just make insects next turn, if you if you find a land, you Yawgmoth, then you get to kill it for extra free. But no land in hand for Carpenter just yet. It has a Young Wolf and a Blood Artist, I believe. All right, here's Plant Token. Two mana. Eh, String Root Geist this is going to go four or er, three Grist, so we're going to have a Chump Block here if we want to keep it nice and healthy. Or I guess it's not Chump Block. It's a Oh, it is a chump block because yeah, of the exalted. Good. Okay. Okay, this is a key turn. Do we have a land? Yes. Good hit. Here, here it is. Beseju. Shieldred's Ooh, the play. This I is a nice a one. one. Does he have a yog, or did I just mistake the shieldred for one? Maybe. We'll see. I think on a dry board, the shieldred's yeah. quite nice, whereas the yog moth needs a lot more food to get going. Body going to take two from the draw as long as Carpenter remembers. There we go. And a body doesn't really have a spot removal spell. Yeah, it, it was a shield the entire time. You know, there's a go for the throat in Carpenter sideboard that I imagine is in the deck right now. A body doesn't have anything like that. I see a fatal push in hand right now. And with they can go grist. Is that not fatal push? Uh did I miss a card? Ooh, I only yeah, I might have missed it when I was writing down these sideboards. I, I think, I mean, I see it. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw him play it earlier, too. So yeah. we can go uh, Fatal Push here, minus sack the String Root guys. We can kill. Uh, I would kill. Whoa, that's bad. He could have killed the Gris and then Fatal Push the Shieldred. Instead, he's just going to sack the Plant Token, kill the Shieldred, and then attack the String Root guys into the Gris for three. All right. So but we saved the fatal push. I believe we saved the fatal push. Saving it probably for Yogmoth. Yeah. So th that's just a body of value in the fatal push, but clearly he values it a lot. Yeah, I think uh, maybe too much. The the I think maybe just forgot that Gris can go at Gris or whatever. I think that's a, a yeah. common line that many people forget. And there are indeed two pushes in a body sideboard, so he does have some spot removal. Here's Young Wolf and Blood Artist to fill it out, and a body really tanking on this fatal push on the end of turn. I might want to get that Blood Artist out of the way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, not dealing with the Grist when he could have is a oh, problem. Oh, it's Grist. Gets two tokens off of it. That's sick. So there's no real... There's no real way for him to attack this Grist down. Especially after the double hit. Even with single. Yeah, I think just miss the Grist on Grist action. It's okay. See if we can recover. Still got game three, even if we lose. Here's a beta push on the Blood Artist. I also think I see an Eldritch Evolution in a body's hand. So if we can find a Young Wolf or a Stranger Geist, so we have two Undying Creatures. Mm. We could just be in business anyway. Um, Alrighty. A body has land number four, yeah. has Eldritch Evolution. But can we... Yeah. Mm. God, we're so close. Any one, any mana creature would be good too. I think he's got Yawgmoth in hand. Yeah. Not sure how much that matters for the Eldritch. I guess it's well, one more activation of the Stranger Geist. Yeah. Oh, there's the Young Wolf over there. I forgot about that one. That one's the problem. Now, the Blood Artist being gone is actually a great thing because that means that even if Carpenter's able to do Yawgmoth stuff like crazy, uh, there's a chance that a body can still combo kill on the following turn. Here's the Yawgmoth. Yeah. So. First things first is Geist kill an untapped insect. Yeah. All right. Draw a card. Bring it back. Now we probably attack as a four power creature. Yeah, and that forces a chump on the yeah. uh, young wolf. Drew Court of Calling. Does that change anything? Not this turn anyway. Young wolf chump blocks. Yeah. And now you really don't have anything else. Yeah, I don't think it's worth like sacking Ignoble to kill a token yeah. and draw a card. So. This is just going to leave Brandon Carpenter the ability to minus and the Grist and kill the Yawgmoth, though. That's an Eldritch Evolution for Carpenter, but he doesn't have any two-mana value creatures to go find his own Yawgmoth. Okay, Yawgmoth being targeted by the Grist. What do you... What does the body have here? I think his hand is two Evolutions and a Cord. All right. So, oh, he's just thinking about sacking his own creatures for stuff. The, the ignoble is worth two cards. 
So he can, in response to this, he could have sacked Stringer, Geist, and Ignoble to kill the two insects, and then it would have forced the Grist to sacrifice maybe a slightly stronger creature. Yeah. Maybe that was a consideration, because it's still technically on the stack, but I think they're just confirming that, you know, he has to announce that, like, beforehand or whatever. Yeah, so. you minus two with the Grist targeting creature. You don't sack until... It resolves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even think you target. I think it's... Minus two, you may sacrifice a creature, and then when you do, destroy yeah. target creature or planes rocker and opponent controls. All right. Well, I think Gabe just, you know, making sure everything's clear from both sides just to make sure that he didn't miss anything or whatever. Okay. And now, Carpenter here, considering the attack, decides not to, has cord, right? Mm. Has something. Um, he had Eldritch Evolution, but it just doesn't really find anything good. Okay. He needs to draw like a wall of roots or stagger of geist. Body found wall of roots has cord and uh ooh, a double block here. That was a quick one. Um isn't that a four three against a one two and a one one? Well, if he didn't announce the he yeah. flip a trigger and let it die, it's a missed trigger, it's okay. Yeah, you are allowed to miss that trigger. Okay, here comes wall of roots. Now wall of roots. Uh, activation lets you cord for two. And there's just a land that can find a Dryad Arbor, but that doesn't really help Carpenter here. I think Avadi's in the driver's seat just had more gas going along in this game. The Grist unable to control uh, uh, you know, all of Avadi's threats. The card advantage from Yawgmoth doing too much. All right, going to sack this zero drop okay. to go get a two. Is the Scavenging is in Carpenter's deck? Because the Scavenging is yes. here could be great. I believe that's what we will see here, but I mean, you can just kill this. Uh, you should be able to kill this before it does anything serious. You just use your other creatures to start killing it, force the activations. Then you start using your undying creatures. And even if that like, deals with some undying creatures, the body is drawing so many extra cards. All right, so Carpenter empty-handed. Uh... Grist on three, scavenging news, young wolf with a counter on it versus a body's noble hierarch, wall of roots with a full grip. I know we have cord, I know we have eldritch evolution and a random. Probably going to cord for two on the instep to get some fodder here, maybe another wall of roots. And then when you untap, you can use two wall of roots and a land to eldritch evolution, one of them for Yogmoth, and then maybe draw some sort of undying creature or whatever to finish everything off. Yeah. He has so many tutors that this is just a setup tutor, not the one that finds the the Yogg. Now, I could also use this to go get a Shrengaru guys too, and that's one of the two undying creatures you need to do the chain. A Patra lets him clear the board, though. That's sick. Doesn't need Graveyard at all. Yeah. That'll play. You know, I a Patra is like the one card that I have long considered, like, cutting when I'm looking at these decks, and then, like, Every now and then, though, it's just like Wrath you. <laughs> Wrath you draw four. Okay, cool. But you did have to pay four life for that. Okay, all right. Draw for turn a body on the precipice of greatness here. Mike Cash's ticket to Atlanta, $1,500 in the expressive iteration play mat for the winner. Here we go, Eldritch Evolution. Did we overpay? I don't know what's happened. Oh, no, we played the Pony Garden this turn. Mm, unclear. Doesn't matter. Okay, uh, here comes Yogmoth. That plus a Patra is going to allow a body to sweep the other side of the board, draw a bunch of cards, and then lastly, Hypatra can just hit Gris for two. That's like the end of the sequence, as long as, you know, a body doesn't win the game this turn, which is worst case scenario for Brandon. Well, if we're just going to keep sack, we're going to start the chain with Ignoble and keep making one ones with Hypatra that we keep sacking. We get to end the chain with an untapped snake token, and that lets us cord for two for a Stranger Geist once the scavenging use is gone, and then we can sack the Geist, undie it back as a three, and kill the Grist as well. Okay, it looks like we drew a Young Wolf as well, so we might just have it rolled up here no matter what. And the snakes, now that we have the snake from the Hypatra, every time we do it, it replaces itself, and uh, the scavenging is here is going to try to eat something out of the graveyard, but none of the stuff in play is actually utilizing the graveyard very much. Yeah. 
So one counter goes on, one counter gets removed, a body draws a card, and we're going to do it again. Go to 12. All right, I'm just going to let it okay. die, draw a card. And now we can do so, it two more times to kill the young wolf. We have a Stringer Geist on hand as well, so we can at the very least guarantee that we kill the Grist. I believe we still have a land to play for the turn two, so I, I can't imagine a body loses. We're going to clear the board. Carpenter has no cards in hand. A body's going to have seven cards or whatever, at least. Well, we can't actually kill the young wolf, can we? Why not? It's just the same thing again. Because he, you turn on a dying once you remove the last plus one plus one counter with minus one plus one counters. Um, oh, right, because yeah. of how your deck works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Yikes. Okay. That's so, funny. Okay, so that's the awkward part. Well, it looks like we have evolution uh, and a land to play for the turn, and I believe we still have a land drop to make. A body here going to attack with uh, Patra and a block. And Dying comes back. I think Abadi's trying to find a way to win this game right now, and I'm not sure he can. So I would imagine just playing land and Eldritch Evolutioning into a Grist would be... He can also just draw nine cards. Yeah, and I think that he's just going to like essentially play some Undying stuff past turn yeah. and then draw cards whenever it pleases him. But now the the Grist and the Young Wolf ensure that Carpenter can kill the Yogma. All right, you know, what are you going to do? You can still just draw nine cards. Yeah, and he, he has an Eldritch Evolution in hand, so he, mm -hmm. he has a replacement Yogg. All right, that's another really land, but we can get Dryad Arbor off of it, so maybe that's something. Yeah. It's another target for Apatra. Yeah. All right, this seems like a pretty obvious Grist activation. Maybe you want to fetch for the Dryad Arbor first, but that just lets him freebie kill the Dryad Arbor with yeah. the Apatra, so yeah, I guess that's bad. Yeah, you sort of have to throw away the Young Wolf in order to deal with the Ogmoth, but what else are you going to do? And then a body just Eldritch Evolutions the Strength of Geist into another Yogg, attacks you for a bunch, and controls your battlefield for the rest of this game. Yep. All right, here's Dried Arbor. For a minus two, a body, going to kill the Dried Arbor in response, draw a card, and gets a snake. Yeah. I've, I mean, um, maybe forgot the snake token. That's okay. Dogmoth going to go after Ooh. Patra. Interesting. Okay. I guess he figures if he goes after Yogg, a body's just going to draw however many cards he wants in response. So there's really... You we can do that anyway. You just got to get the yeah. Dogmoth off the table, I think. Mm -hmm. But here we go. Gabe, going to lock it down this turn. Let's see if he can find the kill. Well, uh, yeah, now he just finds the Blood Artist. Well... Just so make sure he's got it in the deck. Here it is. Eldritch Evolution. And Brandon Carpenter packs it in. Gabriel Body is your champion. Golgar Yogmoth taking first and second place. Gabriel Abadi with an impressive showing with the Blocks Diamond Arboreal Grazer build and just showing off yeah. at all points today. Ran, ran through the tournament 8-0. Oh. No, yeah. No losses. It feels good when you're when like your deck's working well, you chose it a good deck for the tournament, you're playing well, and you just win all your matches. He didn't lose a single match today. Isn't yeah. that ridiculous? I'm trying to think we he won Did he win in three in the semifinals? Uh I think there yeah, it was three because there was like a, a yeah, game the, where it was very close and he lost to the five. To the Marktide, Marktide. Yeah. yeah. And he lost a game in the mirror to Eric Rose. And we, so we, we saw him four times. He lost two games. All right. Well, I'm going to go get that man and get him in here for an interview for you. Give me just he's a second. Hi, right, he's on his way. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do it or you want me to do it? Mm, I'll do it. All right. Can you get in here? Impressive stuff. Uh, before we get into this interview, I'd just like to remind all of you that Todd and I will be back tomorrow for the Pioneer 2K AIQ and Destination RCQ. That is going to start at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, same time we started today. So come back tomorrow and watch another great tournament, this time there featuring Pioneer. All right.
We got the man himself, Gabriel Amati. Congratulations. Yeah, 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 okay. okay. yeah. That makes me feel a little bad, but you're good. Oh, you're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, God, yeah. 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 Very honorable. Me, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to give you any of this stuff, but uh, this is you technically let... the thing that you win. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, so, you know, I need this. At least I'm so totally for now. unorganized. Yeah, I, don't know. I yeah. feel like I'm going to like start summoning something if I leave this in my house. Yeah, it's like Rubik's <laughs> Secrets, I think they call it. Satanic. You know, those are roughly the same. It's just a Stonehenge. Yeah, what fun. I think whatever happened at Stonehenge is like over. Hopefully, <laughs> I don't know. It might start up you, again. You can bring it back. Gotcha. Well, I gotta say, this oh, plate is yeah. amazing. Yeah, show well, it me. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm I'm so happy. <laughs> okay. Why are there two here? It makes me feel. Does he get one or not? Uh, there's one for tomorrow. Got you. Well, this one's for today, and this yeah. one's for me. God, I look like a mess. Ooh, man. Okay, you look good playing. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, looked very good. Well, a lot of impressive plays throughout this tournament. So. I punted against Eric Rose, but thankfully, okay. thankfully, you know. We didn't notice. Yeah, it's okay. It's Your deck's too complicated. It is. That's actually a good deck to play. One where the, the coverage crew doesn't know how to play it well, so we can't play it's on the stakes. perfect. Well, you know, the deck is so interesting. There were so many Yawgmoths in top eight, like three. Yeah. Oh, there were a bunch in the tournament. There were seven. It was tied for the second most played deck. It's really interesting because we, you know, the last time we were here, we saw so much creativity and so much hammer, and that was like the battle. And people were like, I am sick of this. Deal with this. <laughs> Four mana, two, four, pro humans, wipe your board. That's yeah. the, that's the I mean, play. Creativity was still the most played deck today. Hammer had five or six players. So, you know, that metagame didn't go away. It's just that a lot of players recognize Yawgmoth as a way to attack that metagame, you being among them. But you took it the next level mm -hmm. with this Arboreal Grazer tech. This is something I've seen on Magic Online. I've never seen it in paper. And it made all your opposing Furies and Renin Sixes and Engineered Explosives look awful yes. they felt so good because in a scenario where especially in the yawgmoth mirror you're gonna play a turn one one drop with one toughness a turn two two drop two more one drops with one toughness when you can say hey look you it doesn't matter if you kill my stupid druid it doesn't it just it, completely irrelevant it makes the matchup feel so much better you're not worried about oh they played a yawgmoth the turn earlier i'm dead they killed all my dwarf like my, my dorks i have two men in play and no creatures i guess i lose on the spot and that's what the matchup usually looks like. It's just whoever's on the player draw. Just like, oh, he got he got the kill all the things first. Oh, unfortunately, you hate to see that kind of thing happen. Yeah. But if only I had any way to interact with it. If, oh, <laughs> my God. If, you know, if I only played a single removal spell, it's, I'm, I'm not playing. Yeah. So uh, I know you, you and your brother, mm -hmm. you know, switch around decks all the time. You're always playing different things when we're up here. So presumably you've been on Yawgmoth for at least a bit of time after the last time we were here. Uh, and have gained a lot of proficiency with it. How long have you been on the Arboreal Grazer build? The Arboreal Grazer build is a really recent build. I really liked it because it made your burn matchup seem a lot better. When you're playing your one mana dork, it's an 0-1, you don't want to block their goblin guide. You just, you're not interested at all. Also, our board grizzers nuts with a goblin guide. You're putting additional lands in your hand. You just get to escape on that value. And I also saw some goodness on the four color matchup because you'll have a lot of creatures out. You'll fill your hand up. And then you'll have difficulty getting them all out. Our Royal Grazer is really great when you have an abundance of cards in your hand. Yeah, it gets an extra land into play, it gets an extra body to start convoking. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very, very good in high resource games. Extremely impressive. Also, I, I don't know if you guys saw, but every time I played that bounce land, it looked sick. Yeah, Colgari Rod Farm and Colony Garden, those are both enabled by Arboreal Grazer and both look excellent. Yeah, it was pretty surprising. I, you know, it's so funny because uh, Zerk, who's the person who's like, you know what, forget it. We'll we'll play Arboreal Grazer and he did pretty well. He was like, wait, these Colony Gardens are still really good. And he just left them in the main and he left a couple Golgari Rock Farms in the main as well. Even on his normal version, he's like, look, you need the value. There's a version of Yawgmoth playing 23 lands, which is more than on average. And he's like, no, I kind of like it. It, it yeah. feels pretty good. Awesome. So uh, I know you and your brother have been around this circuit for a long time. Is this your first trophy or is this multiple for you now? Uh, so my first trophy came from the very first Apex Invitational Tournament. Ah, yeah, I have okay. the very first play mat. So it's not my first trophy. I think it's maybe my third trophy. It's too easy. What yes. can I say? I mean, you know, they just <laughs> hand me the wins. Now, how, how far above <laughs> your brother? Oh, well, you this is quite easily answered. Uh, well, you know, I don't remember any of his trophies, if I'm being frank. But, uh, you know, if I were to guess... You know, estimate, overestimate, some might even say, perhaps two. I think, but you know, I, I can only recall one trophy he might have. Oh, and that's just two above him. You know, it's so unfortunate. What a massive skill issue. I mean, there's just nothing he can do. Yeah, so, big <laughs> bragging rights in the Abadi family. Uh, it's just too easy. 
Uh, Gabe, congrats again. Are we going to see you tomorrow for Pioneer? Absolutely not, but <laughs> I would be playing the Drake's deck that has recently been done very well. I'm a big fan of Crackling Drake ever since, and you would experience this, the uh, Arc Lake Phoenix Modern Days. Yeah. I, uh, I played that deck in an RCQ a couple weeks ago when 0 4 Yeah. You also top decked a roast against my shield rid in the in the in the one match where you're on the blue red tokens and this was at an NRG. I wonder if you remember the Stod was there. Oh, okay. I yeah, that was disgusting. Well, any okay. You win a trophy, you can get out some uh yeah, yeah, some yeah, 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 yeah. It was a pretty good roast. Wait, what's hmm. what is sorry, that's my twin brother. I wish oh. we could get the cam there to see how much of a okay. goblin we have here. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You get the get the pictures in there. Yeah, okay. Get well, one last time. Congratulations. Thank you very much seeing you here tomorrow. I'm sure we will see you here for the invitational later this year. Absolutely. And uh, good luck at the regional championship that you've also qualified for now. Thank you very much. Okay.